Hello everyone and welcome to this brief video introducing uh, this particular unit's uh, theme. We're going to be looking at reviewing, whether that's you being peer reviewed once you start uh, putting work out there to, to be published or whether it's you becoming peer uh, reviewers yourselves. So we look at this whole process and um, especially how it relates to the course that you're on at the moment, which is exploring the dynamics of dissemination. So, first of all, <clears throat> it's really important for you to remember that you mustn't let anyone dull your sparkle. In an earlier unit of this module, you have uh, um, studied notions about rejection, and that certainly uh, uh, occurs in writing for publication. Don't expect that your work is going to be accepted first time around. In fact, even when you're doing your master's degrees or doctoral theses, um, when you, whenever you're doing those studies, you've got a critical friend with you uh, by having your supervisor. And when you submit work to them, hopefully it comes back with loads of comments on, on how you can improve all of this work and achieve the greatness that you really want to achieve with it. So you've already been used to some sort of peer review as that work is going along. For those of you who have done various types of projects that needed ethical approval as well, that's often seen as a peer review process. It means you've got other people within your same sort of discipline who are acting there as your peers and they're assessing the merits of your work and whether there are things that could be changed or improved or tackled differently. So there's all different notions in regards to peer review. But once it comes to submitting work for dissemination, whether that's you applying to speak at a conference, for example, and then uh, uh, when you do that, you're often required to write an abstract. And it's a, a, a whole committee of organisers who will then decide on who they want to speak at the conference and what sort of presentations they do. So that's another form of peer review. Then when it comes to submitting articles for publication, there's sometimes a difference then, whether something's being assessed by an editor and an editor alone, or uh, by uh, what's called blind peers, which means that it's sent out to people without them knowing who you are. And equally so, if you're commissioned to write chapters for books, maybe it's an edited book by somebody or other, then it's gonna be the editor or the editors who review that. And then when they pass it on to the publishers, that's another load of reviews that happen. So we're constantly under this scrutiny um, by others so that the final work that goes out is truly worthy um, of publication. Now, when it comes to writing your dissertations or theses, maybe you've put those in, you've had them passed for, at, at examination, and you've done really well with this. So congratulations on that. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can take whole chunks of this or maybe chapters at a time and expect that to be published as well. If you look back to the earlier work we did on writing for publication, you know that you have to write in relation to the specific audience that you're addressing. So that's going to be totally different if you're doing it for um, academic at university when it comes to passing your dissertations or theses, or then to the different audiences you choose when you're trying to get that work disseminated. <laughs> you can hear the noise in the background, it's one of my little doggies. I think I'm going to have to do the rest of this presentation with Theo in my arms because uh, for some reason he's, oh no, no, one of the others wants to come up now as well. Okay, uh, he seems to want to be uh, close to me as I'm talking to you. Okay, maybe he's getting jealous I'm talking to you instead. So what we're going to do with this particular unit is look at writing for publication um, and rejection as a learning opportunity. They're two units you've already studied on this module, but seeing how they uh, fit into this whole notion of peer review. And that's the, the key focus for this particular unit. So, as I said in the um, uh, the, uh, the, the unit looking at rejection, you mustn't uh, think, right, I've been rejected once, I submitted something, they don't want it, so tough, that's it, I'm going to bin it and move on. No, don't ever look at it like that. 
You've really got to think that when you do submit work, it's not going to be 100% perfect for whoever your audience is. So always expect that work will come back to you, hopefully with suggestions on what you can do to improve it, to, to get it through to the final whatever it is, publication. But also, um, sometimes you might even have to go back to that work more than to, uh, once or twice. So it's all according to what it is. Supposing you're writing for a book chapter um, uh, in an edited work. So you might be given a script on what to do and you think you've done it as well as you can. And then it comes back from the editor saying, oh, please change some things. Now, it may be that their publication has changed ideas. They might have seen somebody else's chapter and maybe a person has structured it differently. Or maybe they've asked some questions or put a box in with questions in. And then maybe the publisher or the editor thinks, that's a great idea. We'll ask everyone to do this. So it's normal to expect your work to come back uh, um, on more than one occasion. And certainly if you're, if you're trying to write for some of the, um, the higher academic journals, when you look at the impact factor of those, as I've mentioned earlier on the course, the impact factor usually shows how prestigious the journal is and how tough it is to get into it. But that actual impact factor is created on par uh, in part by the fact of how many articles are submitted to the journal and how many they reject. So if you look at a journal that's got an impact factor of, sort of 0 0.5, compared to, say, for example, some of the big international medical journals, which may have impact factors of 47, then obviously it's going to be much easier to get something published in the 0 0.5 journal than it would be in a 47 impact factor journal. OK, so you take all of those things on board. Also, if this is your first time of writing for publication, the higher type of journal you want to get into, um, there is a greater chance you're going to be turned down first time round. So you, you must, must factor that in. Perfect. Don't just think you're going to write something once and it's going to be accepted then. You must expect the review process uh, um, to require further work from you. And that's quite quite normal. But what else? The, uh, the other things we look at in this particular unit as well is not just the peer review process and exploring the whole notion of reviews, but also you building up your wider academic citizenship by becoming um, subject matter experts yourselves and then for you becoming reviewers. So it could be that somebody gets to know your name, say for example with this module now, um, uh, the dynamics of dissemination. It could be that you write your dissertation, maybe you take a picture of the front cover of it or something and you tweet it. And you might put hashtags in or Twitter account names and you might tell different journals that you've done it. So straight away you're getting your um, your name and your profile more widely known in academic circles. Then all of a sudden somebody is writing a journal, maybe it's a special edition of a journal, and they're looking for people to do reviews and they remember they've seen a tweet from someone like you saying that this is what you've done your dissertation on. So that's a way that you may then be known and people request you to, uh, uh, to review for them. Or once you've actually started writing for journals, um, usually when you set up your own profile, it might ask you for some keywords for the specific areas that you're interested in and that you've got expertise in. And then when the journal's looking for reviewers, they might turn around and say, well, OK, we know this person's inter interested in this topic area. We'll ask them. So that's really important as well. And finally, let me say on that, when you are doing reviews, there's one organisation called Publons, so it's worth getting a profile with them. And you need to get all these profiles, research gate, research professional, sign up to all of these different things. And as you're doing review for Publons, that actually counts as a good academic achievement as well. So if in the future you then want to go into academic careers, if you want a research post, for example, you might be asked at interview, what's your research gate score? What's your H index, your I index? All of these relate to your publications and 
um, uh, the various impact factors of who you're writing for. So the more you get all of these things, including reviews, the greater that's going to look towards your academic citizenship, and especially when you're looking for particular posts within research settings. Okay, so I hope this is going to be um, uh, an inspiring unit for you and what you can expect next then the next steps for this to so work through the adobe express page look at all the different points for you to consider there but remember how crucial it is that you give us feedback on moodle in the little forum discussion zone and don't just use this um, set of materials here and think right that's it this is all i need to do for this month but consider finding out more about it so look at what particular interest you've got and um, explore those interests and if you come across some good resources, uh, good materials, then tell us all about those as well. Alright, so share your learning, build your um, community of learning online with us. Thanks, I hope you enjoy it all. Bye bye from Theo.